First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 urges Christians to live as residents or aliens by abstaining from fleshly desires that war against you. In other words, the Christian must make every effort to live by the new covenant rules that will govern the coming kingdom on earth. The rules include things like loving your enemy, Matthew 5, verse 44, loving your neighbor as yourself, Mark 12, verse 31, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, Romans 14, 17, etc. But Christians oftentimes confuse these kingdom living rules or principles with the coming kingdom itself. For example, if you are a citizen of England living in the USA, it does not mean England has come to the USA. Similarly, if you are living like a citizen of the coming kingdom now, it doesn't mean the kingdom has come. So when Jesus says things like, you do not belong to the world, I have chosen you out of the world, Jesus did not mean you are some kind of an alien from another world, let alone that when you die, you will leave this earth to be with Jesus in, quote, heaven. Point is, when Jesus says things like we do not belong to this world, he meant we are not to believe, sound, or behave like this world. In a similar way, when Jesus says to Governor Pilate in John 18, verse 36, my kingdom does not belong to this world, Jesus means the kingdom will not originate, that is, that may look, sound, or act like any current government. German scholar Johannes Weiss was right to say that what speaks more forcefully than all else against the kind of interpretation to which we have been objecting is the fact that Jesus put in the mouths of his disciples as the first petition of their prayer, the words, may your kingdom come. The meaning is not, may thy kingdom grow, or may your kingdom be perfected, but rather may thy kingdom come. He goes on to say that for the disciples, the kingdom is not yet here, not even in its beginnings. Therefore, Jesus bids them to seek his kingdom. Luke 12, verse 31. This yearning and longing for its coming, this ardent prayer for it, and the constant hope that it will come, that it will come soon, this is their religion. We would import an opaque and confusing element into this unified and clearly unambiguous religious frame of mind were we to think somehow of a coming in an ever higher degree or of a growth or increase of the kingdom. Either the kingdom is here or it is not yet here. For the disciples and for the early church, it is not yet here. So when we read verses like Luke 11, verse 20, But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Professor Weiss explains that if Jesus already speaks of a kingdom of God which is present, it is not because there is present a community of disciples among whom God's will is done, as if God's rule were realized from the sight of man. Rather, Jesus does so, speak in such a manner, because by his own activity the power of Satan, who above all others is the source of evil, is being broken. But remember, Either the kingdom of God has come, is here, or the kingdom of God is not yet here. So we should follow the example of the disciples of Jesus and the early church in understanding this simple fact.